Einstein once said when speaking about thermodynamics, it is the only physical theory of universal content which I am convinced that within the framework of applicability of its basic concepts will never be overthrown. Now, I'm not one for the uh, great person uh, interpretation or retelling of history, but uh, Albert Einstein has uh, a really uh, strong case here uh, for, for thermodynamics. It is an extremely successful framework and it will definitely guide our journey in statistical mechanics. Thermodynamics is based on a number of empirical observations, which can and are summarized by the laws of thermodynamics. Some of the laws can be stated in different but equivalent ways. So I will summarize and explain the laws um, in the ways that I find the most intuitive and the most helpful uh, for our eventual journey um, in statistical mechanics as this series progresses. So first up, we have the zeroth law. The zeroth law says that if we have system A and B in thermal equilibrium with system C, then they will already be in thermal equilibrium with each other. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that if we have system A here, and we might have some system B over here. And in between them, we'll put a slightly awkwardly shaped system C. Now, being in thermal equilibrium with another body means that you have the same temperature. So all we're saying here is that we have some temperature of system A called TA, we have some uh, temperature uh, TC for system C, and likewise for system B. All this is saying, really, is that if system A is in thermal equilibrium with system C, then we have uh, TA is equal to TC, and we also have that uh, system B is in thermal equilibrium with system C, so then we have TB is equal to TC. And of course, we can connect the equalities here uh, so that we get that these two quantities are the same. Now, just to clarify though, this statement of the zeroth law is still actually quite vague. It doesn't really tell us anything about the definition of temperature. It doesn't give us a scale for temperature, for example. It doesn't tell us um, how to tell if a body is hotter or colder or what that means. We'll get the, that type of information in a different law of thermodynamics. So the first law is more of a mathematical statement. What we have uh, in the first law is that for any physical process, we have that the change in the energy is equal to the amount of heat, as we will call delta Q, added to the system, and the amount of work done on the system. So the really important part uh, that the first law of thermodynamics adds for us is the following. The first law guarantees that even for irreversible processes where delta Q and delta W might not be very easy to express in terms of differentials of analytic functions, the change in the energy is the differential of well-defined functions of the state. The state of the system, that is. And throughout this video, and when I talk uh, about thermodynamics, when I say the state, what I'm talking about is the macro state of the system. The second law of thermodynamics is probably the most famous law of thermodynamics, and in my opinion, probably the most important. So the law states that there is an extensive function of state S, uh, S of E um, and X. So I'm writing X here to be um, everything uh, else, all of the other macroscopic um, uh, numbers and quantities that are important uh, to describe the macro state of the system. And E is, of course, energy, which is an increasing function of energy. And if the state B is adiabatically accessible uh, from state A, then S of B, so the state at B, the entropy at B, is greater than or equal to the entropy at A. So we see that uh, 
in terms of natural processes or physical processes, the entropy will increase. Now, a reversible process would be one where we could go from state A to state B, and we could also go from state B to state A. So this would also mean that S or the entropy at state A would then have to be greater than or equal to the entropy at state B, or combining uh, these two facts, what we would have for reversible processes would be that um, the change in entropy, which we will define as SB minus SA, would be equal to zero. But in general, this isn't true. So for, for generic processes, the best we can do is we can say delta S is greater than or equal to zero. And this equality holds only for reversible processes. And as we've said, this function S, this extensive function S um, is called entropy. The second law um, has a fair amount of important consequences, which we will state in this video. But in the next video, I will actually derive uh, some of these consequences. Firstly, we have more of a definition that we will see um, in the next video, and that is the definition of temperature. We have that one over the temperature is defined as the partial derivative of entropy with respect to energy. That's a bad E. I mean, my handwriting is horrible, so all of these things are bad. Um, and we keep all of the other macroscopic quantities uh, fixed. So if, if you're not liking this X notation, what I mean by X is, for example, a gas contained in a volume, um, X would just be the volume and the number of particles in the gas. So it's just a shorthand notation. Sometimes, sometimes these aren't the quantities we want to work with. Um, so I'm just keeping it general with X. Now, in most cases, uh, what we will have is that by this definition, T will be uh, greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero. Now, this isn't always true. So if you want to understand when this isn't true, then you can check out uh, some of my other videos um, on the channel about negative temperature, because although the law states that entropy is an increasing function of energy, um, that is only the case if the system does not undergo population inversion. And basically this is a fancy way of saying that um, in most systems, like systems with kinetic energy, uh, like particles moving around, um, as you increase the energy, that gives the system more ways to configure itself. But in some cases, uh, there will actually be less ways for it to configure itself, for example, um, in magnetic systems. But if you want to learn that whole story, uh, go check out my other videos. Now, for reversible processes, we can derive the following equation. DE is equal to the temperature times ds minus the pressure of the system times dv. So I have chosen uh, specific uh, thermodynamic variables here, uh, but this is a really important um, equation. So and E here is the energy, then we have temperature, then we have entropy, um, and then we have pressure and we have the volume. Other important consequences are that um, if you have system A, in thermal equilibrium with system B, then one thing that you can show is that, of course, uh, that TA is equal to TB. So you can see this from the, uh, from the second law. And a, another one uh, is that if you do have a system that is out of equilibrium, so you have a system, uh, you have a system uh, A, and let's say uh, system B, and we actually have that uh, TA uh, is greater than TB, then what we will find is that uh, energy or heat will flow from hot to cold. So it gives us a direction for energy flow in thermal systems. So we're going to derive uh, these consequences actually next video. Uh, so stay tuned for that.
So the third law and our final law of thermodynamics is really simple. It simply says that for a system in equilibrium, in the limit of zero temperature, the entropy can be taken to be zero. So something that we'll see in this series is that entropy actually isn't a, a very mysterious quantity. In fact, what we'll see is that it is a very well-defined quantity that forms the basis for statistical mechanics. And although the laws that I've outlined here today um, and that we'll work with for the next few videos um, are, of course, uh, very successful empirical laws, we will simply allow them to inform our study of statistical mechanics. And instead, eventually, we will infer them uh, from statistical mechanics. Uh, but that's it for uh, this video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.